All right. Ooh, I have the con, as they say. Um, <laughs> so, hi, everybody. I need to do the screen share thing. And uh, that should be it. It says I'm sharing. Baha. There we go. Right. How are you all doing? I know I can't get any feedback, but hi. So uh, I am Mike Ellsmore. I'm developer advocate at uh, Logs.io. I'm hmm, somewhere between JavaScript hackery and somebody who wants to become an operator. Eh, not sure which one I am quite yet. And so what's the problem that this talk is all from? Well, it's Node.js. Node.js isn't actually the problem in itself. In reality, it's the fact that when we are shipping Node.js, we are shipping it by the metric amount. Many, 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 many of them. Um, and when we are working in systems where we are shipping huge amounts of it, um, there's a lot of data and we don't seem to look at it. To be fair, there is a problem with uh, well, logs, metrics, data, and the fact that we don't seem to try tracking it, using it, or keeping an eye on it until something goes bank, which is always too late. Or if we're lucky, um, somebody has had foresight because something has gone bang beforehand and they've implemented it for us so we don't have a clue where it's going or why it's going or how, etc. So this talk is a beginner to intermediate thing explaining how you can start tracking this information and why and what it is so that you can see and find the benefits later. I'm also going to apologize now. I'm having to drink a lot of water very regularly to keep my throat going. Ugh, the joys of getting sick when it's warm. So uh, logs, they look like this. We're used to this when we are building and it's usually just console out using color or something like that. And, uh, you know, it's useful. It helps us debug. It helps us work out what to do. Um, but what about when we're running thousands of them at scale on the internet? Well, the next step, observability. If you haven't heard what that is, that is this. Um, it's three core components. Uh, the first one is logs. So this is, uh, we would use this for diagnosis. Metrics for detecting uh, the information, well, the state of a system, either in a small component or the overall view of the system. And traces, which is how we isolate where a problem could be. We can actually um, drill down into it. Um, most of us as web developers are very used to this. When we open up, um, any browser in DevTools and look at the network traffic, we see the traces and the impact of all the web requests. So that's network tracing, but the tracing here can be applied to the code and its process. Um, you could e equally call it um, something like a distributed profiling. Um, so most people are currently going, I don't need any of this. I've got X, Y, Z solution that means I don't need it. Or we're a small company, we don't need to look at it. Or we're a huge company, we have an ops team, we don't need to care about this. No, I disagree. Because this isn't going to be easy and something is going to go wrong at some point and you are going to have to look at it. It's just the way the uh, internet works. Prepare for the inevitable bang. So let's start with the first one. Event logs, what are they? Well, they're immutable data points. These are what is happening, what has happened in your system, because if it's what's happening, you've got the data precognition, but um, it's what has happened. So it's any given line uh, of data, usually a timestamp with a discrete piece of information. Um, this is console log. This is what you see from STD out or SD error. These are um, the discrete data points we can use to work out what's going on inside of a given part of the application at any given time. Um, 
I'm actually missing my speaker notes, so I actually forgotten all the data points there. Um, so what are the best open source tools for this? Well, um, one of the most common and best in my opinion is the ELK stack, which stands for Elastic Search, Logstash, and Kibana. These are Apache 2 licensed, um, and it, there is a community version available to everybody. Um, it comes with Beats, and the uh, which is part like Logstash. So Elasticsearch is the engine for storage of all the log items that go in. Logstash and Beats are the means to send data into Elasticsearch. Um, specifically when it comes to logs, it is a uh, beat called FileBeat. And Kibana is the visualization and graphing engine that's on top. This is the way of being able to actually build alerting and finding out what's going on. Ba -ba -ba. System metrics. This is slightly more difficult and a bit harder to comprehend sometimes, at least for me anyway. Um, system metrics, once again, immutable data points. This is what has definitely happened. Um, these are usually a label, a data point, and a timestamp. These are specific data points around, well, if you are looking at, say, system data, then it would be CPU usage, memory usage, um, or memory, uh, free memory, disk IO, network, um, you can even get power consumption if you configure it correctly. Um, and this is on a system level. You can then go down to the um, process level as well, but on average, you just look at it from an overall systems point of view. You can also um, define custom metrics to be sent through, uh, which can be very useful if you're trying to do stuff like tracing user behavior alongside these statistics. Um, Next slide, and there we go. Here is the best tools for use with it. So Grafana is a visualization and reporting tool on top. Um, so, well, sorry, open source Grafana is um, a UI tool for this. Um, comes with uh, dashboards and tooling to do alerting, etc., on the information. Uh, Grafana, in our case, we run it on top of our ELK stack. So we are passing information into Elasticsearch and reading that in Grafana. You can also, one of the most common types is Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus can be run on top of Elasticsearch, but it's a uh, better use case is to be used with something called M3DB. Um, and I am currently learning more about that because it's a whole new data set that I have, well, data engine that I have never used before. Oh, there we go. Um, if anybody does have any questions at any point, just drop them in the chat and I will get to them at the end of the talk or when my brain can process everything at once, which is not very often, I won't lie. And then the last one, the hard mode. This is um, something that I took a while to wrap my head around and uh, finally understand and be able to use. So tracing, it's the end-to-end -end flow of an application consists of traces and spans. A uh, trace is the execution path of the application. So data goes into its endpoint. Um, and spans are the individual pieces that the trace followed. So a trace is built of spans. So for example, in the terms of a, a JavaScript application, in an express app, we could treat the entry point, the get request as, um, well, not even the get, get request, the security authorization at the top of it as the beginning of the trace. And then you can go through and measure each of the middleware points as individual spans or all the individual components until it reaches our end point, which would be when the data has finished. Do -do -do. Ah, uh, Kenneth Jones has a decent question, which I will answer when I get around to the demo part. Thank God. Um, and uh, tracing in this format is best used in uh, the microservices distributed pattern, uh, purely because if it's a monolith, um, you can do simple, uh, simpler versions of profiling from beginning to end where you can just run through the entire DI pipeline, et cetera. 
Whereas if you've got um, components running in isolation, you want something that can measure it across thousands of machines um, and connect those services together. Just think of uh, Netflix with its diagram of thousands, well, is it hundreds or thousands? Somewhere between hundreds and thousands of microservices. And obviously when uh, they want to find a problem, they want to know which microservice is causing other microservices to have problems. And distributed tracing allows for that. Ah, there we go. And the best tools for this. Uh, I'm actually missing one from here, but I, that's because I haven't uh, used it at all in my uh, in my own uh, freedom plane. This is Jaeger and Zipkin. Um, I've only used a little bit of Jaeger. Well, a little bit of Zipkin used more Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger is a distributed tracing tool that's open source. It was originally built by the people over at Uber, it was open sourced, and has now got a very, very busy community around it. It's really, really in depth about Jaeger. They have a very, very active community at jaegertracing.io where you can get hold of their Slack, GitHub, the whole shebang and learn anything that I miss or that is well beyond my knowledge. I'm not going to lie, Jaeger itself is built in Java, which is my nightmare language. Everybody has one. Um, so I can't actually name any of how the internals of Jaeger worked without crying. So here we go. Here's the demo time. <clears throat> this is going to be taking a little while preferably 15 to 20 minutes, uh, where I'll be able to take us through uh, implementing some base logging and metric data. And if we're lucky, hopefully, uh, implementing some Jaeger. I have taken the brave or stupid choice of uh, trying to do it as somebody who has never done this before. So we are going to be using documentation data to be able to do this. I did do a dry run, but just in case. So, da -da -da. There we go. So we have our Wii application. Just a Docker Compose thing because I wanted to replicate having multiple uh, versions of the application running independently. Um, but this, we're going to be building this under the principle of we have no idea where it's going to be. This could be deployed to Heroku. It could be on a Cloud Foundry instance. It could be Kubernetes. It could be one of a gajillion million different places. Uh, so I am going to show the shortcut, but I'm also going to show the better way of thinking about things where possible. So two parts of the application and a uh, queue in the middle to make the thing glue together. The receiver just receives a request, sends it to the MQ, and then reads it in the processor. And that is, takes an image, drops it on a queue, takes the image, uh, image URL, from the receiver and just saves it to hard disk. Um, you can all imagine it doing, you know, many hundreds of millions of different things more difficult than this, but it's a good start to show off the basic principles. So the receiver, really simple code. Just simple get request, try catch throwing it into a queue, lots of little bits of logging so we know what's going on. And the same here, this is just, a processor that's grabbing it, turning on the queue, listening to it, consuming the queue, dropping it onto disk, or dro dropping the image, downloading it, and dropping it onto disk. And just carrying on with loads of little things. The only little hacky thing is I have put a set time out to make sure that this turns on after our Rabbit MQ does. So let's turn this little thing on. Docker Compose up, and just for good measure, run the build version of it. So the receiver is on and is running at the port 8080, which obviously it's not because it's Docker magic. We are going to get it on a funky long one that we don't conflict. And there we go. There's the processor. It's now also connected. So this is a lovely, cute panda image like that. And we are just going to save that. So the image has been sent to the queue. If we check the queue, we'll see that, aha, Image request received, sent to the queue. The queue has been interacted with. 
and the processor is receiving it and saving it to disk. Now, if we want to do, we could do a Docker exec, go into the image, into the container, and actually grab the image, but I don't see the whole point in doing this. And as um, Kenneth Jones put earlier, here are some just, these are the plain text of ones. Plain text, just a line that goes out. That is a log, that is fine. Now we're gonna go and do something possibly dangerous. We're going to modify code that's working, which you know could inevitably lead to it not working. And we're gonna go into the receiver, part of the application, npmi. We're gonna to want to download Winston. Uh, doo -doo. Luckily, that's the oh, that's the processor one. We want to be looking at the receiver one first. <sighs> Luckily, we have a whole bunch of things. So, const uh, Winston. Why is it when you know somebody is watching you type, you for the life of you cannot type? So, anybody else um, <laughs> can uh, can type whilst being watched? You need to teach me everything you know because I am awful. Excellent. And to do. Right. So I remember correctly, we will want to do logger. And then const logger equals Winston dot create logger. Now, if I remember correctly, the default one will just make it throw everything to disk anyway. So we'll want to change that to, mm, is that a debug statement or an info statement, you think? I am thinking that is a info statement. Actually, no, you know what? That's debug. We don't need to know when it actually starts, but we do need to know when it's finished. So logger dot uh, info and that's because in this instance we are able to infer the log level of the information by defining this and these will be plain strings and this one is an error this is important this we will define as an error so we can easily find it later and in this case uh, dot info I oh, know let's go log there we go. Now, obviously, gonna kill this one quickly. Should have done that before I started typing. Because uh, rabbit NQ always takes a moment. There we go. Standing up, build. There we go. Cannot create property. Ooh, I have gone and clowned. Uh, you... Hmm, there we go. Ah, oh, dead. Ah, it's because I have clowned it. Oops. Do, 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 do. Just refer back to my notes because anybody who's sensible, ah, uh, yeah, transporter. Oops. Got ahead of myself, completely forgot transporter. Let's kill that so that we, whilst we are doing this bit, it is configuring in the background. There we go. There's something to transporter. Now it's just going to dump it to log. Whilst I'm doing that, there is also another one I want to look at, which is the easy way of doing this. So this is going to just start dumping out to uh, our console working versions of the log, hopefully, if I haven't messed. Create property instance of the... Intriguing. I'm pretty sure that's how we use log. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Um, no. Let's change that. Infrared. Wonderful thing. I was only practicing this two hours ago and I've already forgotten everything through panic. There we go. That's better. And rabbit Q, excellent. There we go. Excellent. So if I now run the and it will save and it will go Winston. So this is a multi-line object where it is sending through uh, in answer to your questions, uh, Kenneth. Um, that is an object version of it. So inside of Winston, it is converting it to an object with all the message and the log level information, which we can then interpret at the other end. So we're sending that to disk, uh, well, to STD out. Now, if I can find where we go, here we go. We're gonna take, do the quick and dirty version first. We're gonna ship your data. Yeah. And we are going to just throw this into Logs.io via the fastest means possible, which if it's multi-line, uh, if it's an object, it can be interpreted directly off our Docker image that we have to run with it. So I'm going to turn this on in a terminal. There we go. And do do. -do. And that should be listener.logs.io. And this one, I believe I saved it locally. Logs.io. Shipping, shipping token. Yeah, should be the one. Ta da. And that means anything we do inside of. Hither should start appearing in our elk. Now this is important. So if I just send one random request to make it do some stuff, do, do there we go. Some inflammation is flowing through. And then if I go back to here and log in to our ELK stack, which um instead of having to stand up my own version on my own machine, I am going to be lazy and use the one happily and handily provided by my employer. So logging into Logs.io and Kibana. And we should quickly see some information coming through. Does occasionally take a moment to double check that it's saying it's getting stuff. Do, 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 do. Collecting logs. Well, it says it's getting stuff, and I see information going through. Now uh, we just got to wait a moment for all the queuing to stay, or catch up with itself. <sighs> Always what you want, waiting for the universe to catch up with you. So, that's great. Um, we'll move on whilst we wait for that to play catch up. So in this case, um, we're relying on, on um, the Docker stream to be, well, the tail of the logs to be picked up and thrown into Logs.io via a handy dandy little helper Docker container. However, what happens when you're deploying this to, the, to a standalone server somewhere or an enterprise uh, piece of kit in a box or even just a box in your office that you want to be able to monitor with the top of everything else? You're not going to have Docker and handy little helpers to do this. You're going to have to hardwire it in. So we are going to add into the code a different transporter. So these transporters are the way that Winston tells it to um, communicate to the console or to different methods. There is one for Logs.io. Uh, do do. And that should be npm, yes. And that should be Winston logs, I, uh, I believe. There we go. And all this does is allows us to add a new transporter, which means instead of waiting for it to be sent out to console and then sent out to 
um, the ELK stack for us to process, we can read it directly out of here. So if I do this, go back to our code, do npm i save Winston logs I Oh, I should probably definitely kill that one so it's gonna start up again when I need it. And uh, we'll insert that here. Move that over yonder because meter. And add that to the list of listener. Let's cheat a little bit. Go find out how what I typed in here. Uh, and oh, I'm going to need to. Yeah, gonna have to do this, and I'm gonna do it just off screen so that nobody sees it. Because whoops, because I've just realised I forgot to set up a uh, locally NV in the Docker image to uh, capture the. Uh, so I'm just going to need to do. M M I dot env i'm just going to do it off screen so nobody can see and tell me off for uh, accidentally leaking keys everywhere whoops and uh, do cd uh, and do and go cd receiver So let's change that to process.env dot jumping token and nano dot and then I need to And when you think you're all fully prepared and you forget to do one wee thing. Let's save that. That's it. Yes. Good, good. And I believe that should work. Right. And now we should be shipping directly to logs.io from the source code, as well as sending it to our uh, local instance uh, of the console. Still not coming through. Intriguing. Well, we'll find out in a moment when it goes bang. <laughs> um, there was a problem with the request. Valid URI. Hmm. I'm going to do something that I'm going to very much regret. Yep. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, you silly, silly devil. If you intend to use uh, .env locally, please remember to load .env locally, which should then be load. Uh, so it's not load. Oops. Here we go. And it's saying it's passing it through. Hunky dory, wonderful. That's all we want. Let's see if we're actually going to receive information. Incredibly frustrating when it's doing when it does this to me. Uh, 
Okay, so there's all my tests from earlier today. Minutes. Intriguing. Just when you want this to work absolutely perfectly live. Uh, let's trigger a couple more. And well, at least we know it's working locally and the transporter isn't bailing out and throwing a penny because it would normally for an exception. So it is transferring, just being slow and I'll have to work that one out later. Okay, well, um, apart from the demo fail of me not being able to see, ah, there we go. So, <laughs> there we go. Oh, I probably haven't got the log level set to the correct one. I probably want to have it set to log level. I think all should be able to trans uh, send all of them. I'll turn that on now and just double check. Uh, yeah, so I need to, yeah, I'm limiting the error level. Oh dear. But there we go. We have uh, log information being sent over quite nicely. Oh, yeah. Now it's definitely playing catch up with all of them. We, uh, but we can see that we sent items to the queue. Great, and that's uh, if we did the same in the receiver and uh, the processor, it would be exactly the same. I'm probably going to have to copy and paste that bit over as well. So, uh, excuse me for a moment. Yep. Okay, there uh, we go. So let's move on to the next bit, which is metrics. Now, metric data, we're not going to go into trying to send custom information from inside the application because uh, that is really, really hard and probably about a 50 minute session on its own. So we are going to go and take the cheat way because the cheat way is nice, quick, easy, and you can get some benefits out of it very quickly. So once again, logo docs, very comprehensive docs. And the docs team have taken a long time in making sure this is simple for everybody to consume. So this one is docking containment. What it does is it actually connects to the host to read out the metric information from the host machine in regards to all the Docker, the Docker clients. Um, so it is, you know, very comprehensive in the information it will receive. So if I paste that in here, and we remove this and change it to the key, the local key, all the keys. Logs IO metrics token. Let's make that run. There we go. This metric um, container, what it's actually doing is standing up a copy of metric beat and get, uh, using the system module and connecting it to the host and contain uh, grabbing all the metric information for those. It's doing it on a um, tick. I think it's a one or five second tick. So throw some random data in just to make sure it's actually doing some stuff. And if we go back to logs IO, go to the metrics. There we go. And we can see that we are starting to receive some information. Excellent. Sent to Q. That's the Kibana. Now, there we go. That's, there we go. There's no data yet. Wonderful. Uh, but if we then went into the dashboards and do look for a specific dashboard. Ah, there we go. That's what I'm after. And uh, we change this to the Docker overview. It give us the uh, information being sent over from Docker. Unfortunately, once again, we are waiting for the Ice Age for information to propagate everywhere. The joys of information having to pass through about 50 different gateways to get where you need it. But it would come here eventually. Um, but just to be completely open and transparent, When you install metric beat, you can then use it to uh, look at many, many, many other components. Metric beat, uh, metric beat is actually built and maintained as part of the um, metric, the beats as part of the elastic, uh, uh, the ELK stack. 
And if you're after just the system level information, great, but it can also do drill downs into all sorts of different smaller components. Um, so if you want to be able to maintain uh, information over CouchDB, one of my favorite little projects, Docker specifically, uh, Elasticsearch itself, uh, HAProxy, et cetera, et cetera, it will log and maintain it. Let's give it another moment to see if all the information is actually propagating through. It is not. And I don't have enough time to be able to see why I am not seeing that information. Uh, okay, it's definitely got my key and it's definitely correct. Do, do, do. Uh, go to the overall, the wonderful one at the very top, see if it'll Nope. Oh, joyous. Just have to keep waiting for it to turn up. Right. So that is, would be sending metric information. Um, if I had time to pre-propagate this with proper information for us all. Yeah, that's my fault. Sorry, everyone. So the last step is tracing. Now, um, for those of you who are not aware of what tracing is, this is the part which most people are not aware of or used. Um, I'm gonna be talking about Jaeger. Now, Jaeger is a wonderful beast, but it is a beast, in my opinion. It is a big stack of things. This is your standard homegrown uh, Jaeger stack. This is your application. This is what you have built, what you are shipping into the universe. There's your application, there is the client, and there is a, usually a Jaeger agent, which is gathering information. You send information from the client to the agent, the agent then sends it over to the collector. The collector is the middleware which does sampling and aggregation, et cetera, before sending it over to the database and storage for it to eventually be queried and used in a Jaeger UI. Um, in our case, we're gonna very, very quickly uh, try and skip from that bit to that bit to straight to that bit and then see if we can visualize some stuff inside of Logs.io. Just give it another one. Bing. I've not left myself enough time to debug and fix that now. Nuts. Grand, absolutely grand. Um, so uh, let us uh, move on to the next step, shall we? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I need my code. Let's go into the processor which is the one which has got more code for doing stuff. So go processor, there we go. So it receives a, it connects to the RabbitMQ, waits for tasks, and each one processes each task sent to it. Each task is a simple image URL, which it's then saving to disk. Well, grabbing the image, saving that to disk. Uh, ba -ba 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 the joys of having too many windows. First things first, we need to set up the collector. So I've already done this pre in, uh, earlier, on my double checking. So this is our collector. This is actually based on the current Jaeger collector, uh, but we wrap it ourselves uh, to, um, now that's the metric one. That's the log one. <laughs> There's the Jaeger one. Um, we wrap it to add our security logic to it so that we can use our tokens because normally you don't have that tokenized level of information around the standard Jaeger collector. It relies on being inside of your network and secured that way. This allows it to be a for a vendor so that, for example, um, our platform is secured. You need to be able to talk to it securely. So we've wrapped the authentication level information there so you can add your token and ship information. So turn it on and have check. Excellent, we have a collector. Now to very, 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 very quickly, if I remember which window I left the uh, configuring the tracer on. Uh, this is what happens when you have four windows open, each one has 20 tabs. Trying to remember where you left all of your information is a little bit of a pain in the butt. So, and hallelujah, right, cool. So, need the Jaeger client. Uh, you know what? 
to be fair, so that we can all see it. That's that. So go back to my code. We want to install the Jaeger uh, client. Great. And add that here. Um, so const init tracer acquire Jaeger client dot oh init tracer so we're going to configure this tracer which is then uh, open tracing compliant um, and open tracing is an older standard that has been superseded by something that I would like to mention in a little moment regardless of oh I've only got a few minutes so if I, this doesn't work we're going straight to talking to that point um, cool so I am going to copy and paste as all great development is done from here to here. And we're going to rename this to uh, webinar image save. And for the sake of all things being truthful, no one would ever want to see this code in the wild anywhere being used, so it is the version zero. And after that point, uh, we want in the tracer, give it the options, correct, grand, absolutely fantastic. And then we want to move to the open tracing documentation for the way of actually uh, sending this over, because then we can use the standard tracing. So open tracing and then tracer start span. There we have I yep. So start span and then we can start sending information. Const span. Actually probably yeah. So start span HTTP request there. Eh, start HTTP request. It's an MPQ, a MQP. MQP request. Now then we can just keep adding to the span. So as I said before, a trace is built of spans. So we get to add the uh, different components to it. So in this case, we get to add log information and a finish. And we're going to do that. So do, did we have an exit condition in that code? Did we have a, we do, ah, we do, there we go. So that becomes the, something went horribly wrong, bye-bye, goodbye, good night, oops. Let me just change that to E, E, E. That, that's not E, that's three. What happens when you think you can touch type and you can't? There we go. So that's going to go and, um, well, explode. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to need to include that so it has the correct uh, tag object. And then npmi save. I actually better kill this one so we know it's dead so when we turn it on. Uh, open tracing, there we go. And that's when it, on a dead trace. And we're going to want to add one for when it's on a live trace so we know when it's uh, good and finishing. We can just add some traces in between. So here we go. I'll have it received. And request end event. No, well, it's true. Now we're just going to add a uh, event so we know where they, well, it's going through. So do, 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 do. let's do uh, event file saved and let's get rid of that because we don't need it um but, uh, that should be enough and then open tracing it should take all of two seconds stand this back up and that should mean the processor is going to send some traces through need to do wait for everything to turn back metrics is not fine course metric is not fine because I didn't clear out the bits I forgot to delete. There we go.
and okay. Let's see if we can very, very, very quickly. And I need to log out of here. Oh, darn. Darn, I didn't configure it correctly. I will need to fix that for a later date. Log in as me on the corporate account and go to our Jaeger. There we go. So this is our Jaeger. Cute little logo. I personally feel it should be a Jaeger from um, Pacific Rim, but that's me and the giant nerd inside me wanting to escape. Has uh, it working? Yes, it is. So grab, throw, send, do things like that. Sending through and it's getting information. Excellent. Now, select service. Uh, what did I name the service? <laughs> that would have been useful to remember. So, uh, image safe. Cool. Thank you. Nah. No, no, no. Not going to have the same problem again, are we? Uh, darn it. Oh, no, I know why. <laughs> Haven't configured it to two hours. So, do do do. Where did I leave that? Uh, talk to talk to it over thrift. That's the bit I forgot. Uh, no. Okay, I believe I'm missing the thrift part. Anyway, um, I'm going to run out of time, so I may as well move along. But normally, you would see uh, if I picked up the customer, pull that through, find traces. Uh, you'd then be able to see all the individual dispatches and be able to see the, how everything is breaking down. Now, that should have been how we'd seen it for us, but really tiny minuscule spans uh, consisting of microseconds as it was passed through, you know, itty bitty steps of code. But I don't have time, I don't think. No, I don't to do that. So, last bit. Uh, let's go back to presenter mode. Is... Um, there is an all-encapsulating specification that's coming through. That is open telemetry. Open telemetry is the merging of open tracing and open census, which are both uh, CNCF projects, and open telemetry is now a CNCF project as well, has been for a long time. Uh, that is combining log metric and um, tracing information into this overall uh, observability view of your system with open source uh, software. Uh, we at Logs.io are really really on board with this uh, especially uh, as well life's always easier when there's one way of doing it rather than 15 million of them um and i i believe before i get told off questions if there are any if i left any sort of inkling of wanting to ask anything if you don't want to ask it now you can send me an email i'm more than happy to answer it there or forward you to the right person or answer uh, on twitter because well what else you can do on Twitter other than angry rant and answer questions? I apologize if um, the uh, state of always not leaving enough room for debugging things in the middle of a demo. Yeah. Even when you have a dry run of it, there's always a chance that something goes horribly wrong. And okay, so Grava Sharma, uh, can a node be can a node be a span as well? Um, any chance you can give us some more context there? Are we talking node in the form of a graph, or are we talking node in the form of an application instance? Because if it's an application instance, then in theory, yes. If you have a microservice that, that say a single domain of information, then you can treat it as an entire trace and the span of say are the functions you're passing through. Um, but if you're talking in the form of a graph, normally you build the graph, uh, the graph view of information 
from the traces and span, so I'm not entirely sure what you're asking there. But I'm more than happy to answer anything else that comes through. Let's do that so I can see how many people. Okay, we'll just give it one more minute for questions. And if there are no more, we'll wrap up. Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> and I've managed to keep my tonsils in one in one piece all throughout this. Thank the Lord. Awesome. Glad mm. to hear it. I hope you feel better. Mm. Okay. Looks like we are all set here. Um, any last words, Mike? Um, yeah, uh, if you have had any uh, interest in this, uh, there is a very active community around uh, Grafana, uh, the open source, an active, a really, really active community around Prometheus if you want to get involved there. And if you want to learn how to do logging metric or uh, tracing data, you can go into the open telemetry community and learn so much from them. Or you can come down to Logs.io and pester us because it's our bread and butter, so we may as well help where we can. Wonderful. All right. Thank you for that. And thanks to everyone for joining us. And we look forward to having you join us next time. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>